All right, Great American, we're gonna do a couple things real fast via the YouTube here in like 10 to 15 minute chunks. Shouldn't be that difficult for you. This is gonna be what happens after first bull run, which hopefully we will finish um, today. Um, elsewhere in the world at the time of the Civil War, some interesting things were going on. Over in China is something known as the Taiping Rebellion, where 20 million people are going to be killed. A, a massacre over a teacher wanting more political rights and freedoms near the end of the dynastic era of Chinese history. 20 million people. Um, Karl Marx is going to write that wonderful document, blah, known as the Communist Manifesto. And the world was getting smaller. The transatlantic cable, telegraph cable, had been laid. And the Industrial Revolution was in full swing with railroads and like steam engines. The world was getting smaller. You guys are accustomed to instant access with cell phones and immediate access, but a newspaper being delivered that was only three weeks old was almost the social media of the day. Events, people were more, you know, interconnected than ever before, especially Europe and the United States, as many recent immigrants still wanted to keep up with things or relatives back home in Europe. And so as a result of this, in the first few months of the war, the big question would be, would England recognize the legitimacy of the Confederacy? Would that happen? If that happened, then the Confederacy was going to have a major advantage. Uh, what it would do was, well, not a major advantage, they would have a simpler time getting necessary war supplies, maybe guns, maybe ammunition, maybe food, possibly even allied soldiers. And so, during the time of the Fort Sumter crisis, England declared their neutrality. Like, oh, we're going to be Switzerland, we're not going to take sides. But, they recognized the, Confederates, the Confederacy's right as a belligerent. Now, belligerent is an international legal term, where if you're belligerent, in effect, like you have the right to be angry. And a belligerent status on the high seas allows the Confederacy to trade or capture ships on the high seas. Um, it doesn't exactly give the Confederacy nation status, but it allows them to kind of find a loophole. If there is a British ship, say, five miles off the coast, and the Confederates come across it, oh my gosh, they could A, possibly trade in international waters, or the Confederates could take over the British ship on international, in international waters. Kind of like legalized piracy. So everyone knows what's going on. It allows England to somewhat trade with the Confederacy, but it will not violate international law because to openly do so could be seen as an act of war against the United States. England's like, well, man, they beat us twice with pitchforks and shovels. Do we really want to antagonize them again? So they don't. Now, the Confederacy want to get as much cotton um, into the hands of the British textile manufacturers to get money to buy war supplies. <coughs> now, most people in the North figure that England would side with them since the country had abolished slavery and the slave trade. So why would they side with the Confederacy? Problem is, some of these things are not always about what's ethically and morally right. It's all about, like a girl in pitch perfect sense, it's all about the money, money, money. It's all about making money, and morals can go out the window when you can make some cash. Now, the British head foreign minister, a guy named Lord Palmerston, 
so that British manufacturers needed cotton, and it comes from the South, and the Union blockade, the Anaconda Plan, would make it very, very, very difficult to get. And despite their claims of neutrality, the British, well, they're kind of shifty. They built blockade runners, ships with a cargo hold that sits low to the water, making it harder to spot. If you go down to Wilmington, right, right by the time you get to the 4095 split and vents and you see blockade runner resort this and blockade runner that, because the Outer Banks of North Carolina are a bevy, well, going back to Blackbeard, right, Edward Teach of piracy, blockade runners and Rhett Butler, this is the area in which to do it. They needed, the British built them and sold them to get goods. The American East Coast is a lot closer than sailing around Africa to India. So, the Confederacy believes that the recognition of England is crucial to their success. So in October, right around this time of year of 1861, an incident known as the Trent Affair begins to blow up. It's not, you know, dramatic, but it is important. When two Confederate um, ambassadors, James Mason and John Slidell, are going to sneak out of Charleston Harbor en route to London and Paris to ask for European recognition of the Confederate States of America. On a dark night, the two set out from Charleston on their way to Havana, Cuba. In Havana, Cuba, they are transferred to the HMS Trent, right? Her Majesty's, you know, mail ship, the Trent. It was an unarmed vessel carrying cargo and dispatches. This is James Mason, this is John Slidell, and this is going to be Queen Victoria. Well, when we find out that the delegates are in Cuba, they've got to come near the Florida coast and up our coastline, the Gulf Stream and off North Carolina turn and move their way across the Atlantic to England. So the president called out the United States Navy and they sent out the ship, all ships in the area, to scout out for the Trent. And the captain, Captain Wilkes of the USS San Joaquinto, spots the Trent and decides he's going to stop the vessel. He hails it, and it keeps sailing, so he fires a shot across the bow, which means I'm giving you warning. If you don't stop, we are going to, you know, put a round in you next. This is a complete violation of international law. We fired on another ship. However, it was in the American sphere of influence, and the captain of the Trent has no choice but to stop. That's where I will pick up the story, hopefully in class, but if not, at least we're this far, and we're going to keep doing this through the Trent Affair, um, through the Battle of the Monitor and the Merrimack, and up and through um, the capture of New Orleans. Thank you guys. Please watch this.